pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Here at 500 Startups. Yep. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your background. Let's, you know, recap. Yeah, sure. When did you start it? Yeah, we're a Canadian startup. We moved here from Edmonton, Alberta, and we've been working on Pinshape for about eight months. Wow. Um, yeah, and I came out of the finance sector, so I've spent most of my life in due diligence, helping companies buy and sell other companies. Yes. And uh, slowly moved our way into 3D printing. Totally changed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit more about uh, the 3D printing industry and about your startup. Yeah, sure. So the industry right now on the consumer side, which we're focused on, is just exploding right now. Yes. Um, we're seeing a lot of companies coming out making 3D printers. And we're seeing a lot of designers starting to enter the space and create 3D printable models. So we're really trying to uh, look ahead into the next couple of years where a millions of, of 3D printers will be sold and when people get home and they have a 3D printer or they don't have a 3D printer and they want access to this technology, where are they going to go online to find really interesting shapes? So we're focused on creating a marketplace where we have exceptional content designers on our platform where people can explore content. They can download that content at home and print it at, on their home 3D printer. If they don't have a 3D printer, they can order 3D prints and we, we professionally print and ship in over 35 materials. So we're really material. Interesting. Yeah. We've been talking today. I was like, what, are the, what is the main material that it's used? I yeah. hope it's not only plastic, but we have other stuff as well. Sure. Yeah. So there's plastic, ceramics, sandstone. You can print in aluminide. There's a, a variety of different metals now, uh, including silver that you can print in. So we're really expanding on the material side. And there's a few really interesting companies here in the valley that are focusing on, on materials and just expanding our selection of uh, materials that we can print in. But there's a lot of colors in there, a lot of really fun stuff going on. Great. Yeah. So this is your first, I mean, entrepreneurial experience? Yeah, I've started a few really small things. Like when I when I had kids a few years, I was in grad school, I started an online di diaper company to help a few friends get really <laughs> low-cost diapers and just more fun projects, nothing too, no, nothing I ever took really seriously. This is the first time that uh, my co-founder Nick and I, we really spent six months uh, learning about 3D printing, learning about this market, learning about all of our competitors, and we we saw a big gap that that needed to be filled. So we created Pinshape, and we're we've been working on it for about a year now. So everything started first. You were like very interested about this industry. Then you started to study about, and then you were like, okay, I think now we have something, and let's jump into it. Yeah, I think for me, I'm a, I'm a content junkie, so I really like exploring content. I think if you look at the last couple of years, you're seeing photos that just came online and everybody all of a sudden had a, had a, a camera, was walking around with a camera and we saw a lot of photos being uploaded and then it was video. I think the next big wave of digital media that we're going to see come online is going to be 3D printable models. And right. soon, I think if you look around wherever you are right now, everything you see is going to be digitized, it's going to be online, it's going to be available for you to explore and customize and, and order and refine. I think 3D printing is really about customization. So how can you take things, customize them for you, and then order them online? So I think that's where the next big wave, and I want to be a part of that wave. I really think it's going to be really interesting what people are going to be creating and modeling online. So I'm excited to be excited to be a part of that in uh, this industry. Giving power to the makers. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and all the all the designers out there. It's, it's a lot of creativity is going to be a lot of new creativity is going to be coming online shortly. I believe so. I yeah. believe so. And so talking about your past, you were like doing a lot of due diligence and working with investments and finance. So I believe that in you right. know, looking for investments for you, it's going to be easy. Hopefully, right? yeah. <laughs> um, hopefully. So how was it like to jump from one industry to another? Yeah, sure. I spent a lot of my time, like I'm a, I'm a CFA charter holder. I went to grad school, studied finance, and I spent most of my career um, working at companies like Deloitte and Aimco, an investment management company, helping make investment decisions. and. What I learned was that uh, I'd rather be on this side of the fence, <laughs> helping to grow and create value for a company myself. Uh, I spent a lot of years helping other people create value, and for me, I always knew I'd want to be an entrepreneur. It was just a matter of time before I found an industry that I was really passionate about, and I'm glad that I found that with 3D printing. Great. Yeah. And it's a good industry, right? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a, we're just at the really early stages of 3D printing, so I feel like we're just at the infancy of what what's possible. It's like. It's like in the 80s, people thought it was crazy that we'd have our own computer, and 10 years ago, people thought it was crazy we'd all have our own cell phone, and now people are looking ahead and wondering, how, how is 3D printing going to affect my life? How, how am I going to be a part of that process, and how, how is it going to improve my, the quality of life? I think that's hard for people to imagine right now, but I think very shortly, people will start seeing how this technology is going to affect them, and I think it'll be more profound than people realize. For, I mean, can you predict when we will be able to have like a lot of people having 3D printers at home 
and being able to you know print my newest whatever <laughs> yeah for sure yes. I think I think the reality is that 3d printing is going to be similar to uh, photo printing right now I think a lot of, of the prints that you probably get printed at home you you order and pick up at a retail store close by so I think in terms of having a home printer there will be a subset of people who do use their 3d printer a lot whether it be for work or some some very active hobby that they have at home but the reality is that I think the good quality printers will be more at, at your local retail store and you'll find content on pin shape you'll order that content you'll pick it up at um, you know a Staples or Home Depot or Walmart or what have you so I think oh, we'll a see a more right. distributed 3d printing over the over the near term and the median term eventually I think people that really fall in love with it will buy a 3d printer and print lots of stuff at home that's definitely happening now and it con will continue to happen but I see more of the technology and and part of our our strategy is making that technology accessible to everybody and that means you probably aren't gonna buy a 3d printer but if we can give you access to local uh, high quality yeah. prints, then it makes sense for you to find something. Yep. That's a good idea. So, and tell me a little bit more about being here at 500 Startup. Sure. Right? So, how is this experience for you guys? Yeah, it's been amazing for us. We drove down 26 hours. We drove down here. Um, that's right. That's yeah. the funny story about your startup. Yeah. That's the reason I picked you guys. Oh, good. Yeah, we the 3D printer. <laughs> yeah, we got it. When we got into 500, Nick called me really early in the morning. We literally quit our jobs a few days later. Um, we, I have two kids and a wife at home. They're, they've stayed in Canada. Nick has a girlfriend at home. Uh, oh, we bye. we got in a car. We drove down here 26 hours, and we've been here for seven or seven or eight weeks now, and it's just been incredible. We've learned with the Canadian. Car? With a Canadian car, yep, <laughs> you bet. Yeah, we uh, we just learned so much. You know, people at 500 have been incredibly supportive and helpful for us. It's just a really good environment to learn and test and make mistakes. And and you're with 28 other companies that are all trying to figure things out. And we've learned so much from them as well. So it's just been a great community. It's a great family here. And for us, we're just really early stage company, and so it's been great just to learn from all the mentors and all the uh, staff here at 500 have been uh, amazing. I've, I've every, so many great things to say about this program. I feel so lucky that we were selected to be part of it. I really do. And it was like your first, the first time that you applied for 500 startups and you were like here right away? Or? Yeah, it's interesting with us. We applied to Batch 8. We were basically an idea when we applied to Batch 8 and we, we were not accepted in the program, oh, obviously. Okay. So there was like a first time. There was a first accepted. time, yeah. Yes. And then the second time we interviewed and they remembered us. We made a lot of progress since that time and we, we had an MVP and we were kind of getting ready to go. So it was uh, we, were, we were at a really good time where we, we could take advantage of everything that 500 has to offer. And so since you had failed the first applicants yeah. and how, how did you feel when you were like yeah you were accepted oh we were I was so we were really happy I mean it was really early in the morning that we got that email and it was yeah it was pretty amazing we were just incredibly uh, thankful and appreciative to have the opportunity to come here <laughs> sorry and where do you guys live now we got an apartment about um, a 10 minute walk from here. We all have very different sleep schedules. Our tech co-founder, Andre, he, he never know when exactly he's gonna sleep or when he's gonna be awake. So we had to find somewhere close where he could walk to you work. To and office, I'm here really early in the morning and we all have different schedules. So we, we decided to find a place that's uh, within walking distance from, from, so the, from the office. How many people in the company right now? So we're three co-founders and we have uh, two interns and two employees in Poland that work for us uh, on the development oh, wow. side. So yeah. you have an international company as well, you know, co-founders from That's right. Can Canada based here in Silicon Valley with you know, programmers, I would say. Yeah, Poland? exactly. Yeah. They've been uh, a few of them, like one of them has been with us since the beginning of our project. So he's been uh, he's been a great, he's been a really good addition to our team. And what is your biggest challenge so, so far? Your biggest learning as well? Yeah, our biggest challenge has been the um, just the, the, the basic challenge of the marketplace. So we're in a marketplace, we're in a really early stage environment. So we're just working right now on building our supply side of our marketplace and attracting and, and retaining really good quality designers. So that's been the, uh, the main focus that we've been on since, uh, since we got here two months ago. And personally speaking, uh, how does it feel to be the CEO of a new company, having left family behind and to come yeah. here? It's a huge change for me. I came from a corporate environment. Um, I, I, for us, we're here really early in the morning. We work seven days a week as hard as we can. We're taking full advantage of this opportunity. Um, it's just great to be in a position where we can try the things that we think are going to work and we have. there's nothing stopping us here. It's been. Uh, 
yeah, it feels like we have a lot of freedom, I guess. Good. To, yeah, Good. Do, do whatever we can. And what, I mean, to wrap up, what kind of advice would you give to other entrepreneurs that would like to come to Silicon Valley or start their own company? Yeah, I guess my advice would be read the read Lean Startup. That really, like for us, that changed a lot of things about what we were doing. We were wasting a lot of time before we read that book. We were just wasting time on financial projections and writing business plans and things we learned in grad school that we don't do anymore. Oh. Um, my second piece of advice would be just talk to as many customers as you can. Um, get out of the office, talk to 20 customers, uh, ask them as many questions as you can, and work with them to improve your product. And then and keep talking to customers. And yeah, to go beyond the 20 first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It would, initially, when you're validating your concept, I think it's just really important to get out of your office and meet with people and spend an hour with somebody and really understand the, the challenges that they're having and then use that to, to validate your concept going forward and use those relationships to make sure that you, when you're making improvements that they're, they're uh, affecting the bottom line or the needle that you're trying to move. Great. Yeah.